I guess moving into the show, we have, uh, in my opinion, a special guest today, somebody that I've been pretty close friends with ever since they stepped into the sport. He told me not to gas him up too much, but he's a Canadian a world indoor triples champion, a Canadian national junior champion, an Ontario junior champion, and he spent some time bowling in Australia. And uh, that today is Eric Gallifo. Hi, guys. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Nice to see you, Eric. How's uh, how's the whole uh, summer been for you? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been uh, been interesting. Uh, coming home from Australia, really excited to get into the uh, the season here. But obviously, we know how that went. Um, so just been uh, been working a lot and uh, trying to get as many bowls down as possible. Perfect. Well, before we get too far into this, I like to ask everybody the same question, just for people out there who might not know who you are. Uh, who is Eric Gallifo and who are you today? Yeah, so um, I'm a 19-year-old kid. I live in uh, Toronto, Ontario. Um, I've been bowling for about uh, six years. Um, I am on the development team for the national team. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Perfect. <laughs> And I mean, for for six years, um, you've done quite a few things in just uh, in just a few <laughs> short years. Yeah, it is wild. So I remember the first time I ever met Eric was at the the national juniors in um, Etobicoke, <laughs> and he was just this little kid. And I remember, um, I think it. Uh, someone said like well Eric it's at your club you might as well play and yeah. uh, he, he was okay for a, a guy who just started that year or even a couple weeks before he wasn't a bad player at all and then it was just crazy the next year he shows up and he'd been working on the greens a lot with coaches and whatnot and he was a completely different athlete and it's just crazy how quickly the progression's gone for him yeah I've been uh, I've been super super lucky I've got to work with some some incredible coaches uh, Daryl being one of them um, so yeah I've obviously just got a very huge advantage of uh, meeting some really, really uh, important and very, very well uh, knowledge bowlers super early in my uh, my bowls career, and um, just tried to take in every single thing I could, and uh, now I'm here. <laughs> you did speak a little bit about the time you spent in Australia. Uh, talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I um, I moved down to Australia uh, about ten months ago. Um, a, a town about 25 minutes north of Perth called Clarkson. Um, and I met um, this guy, these two guys, Kyle McElroy and Dave Rankin in uh, England at Potter's last year, um, playing with my dad. And um, Kyle was generous enough to offer me a spot playing uh, for their the Double View pennant team, which is the club I played for down there. Um, so, yeah, we uh, – oh, there's Kyle in the chat right there. He is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, I lived with him and uh, we uh, we played a season of pennant together uh, with the other sixteen guys on the team and it was an incredible experience. Um, I would do it again in a second for sure. Uh, what were the biggest differences you noticed? Uh, let, let's just step away from the sport of bowls for just one second. What were some of the biggest uh, lifestyle differences you noticed living in like Australia as opposed to living in Toronto? Um. Well, I um. I found that like I was I was bowling every day like I was to the green every day, um, so I I worked in the bar at the club. Um, I find that the biggest difference um, I know you said stay away from bowls, but it would be in bowls is just how much of a of a like location the bowls club is. Like you get people who have never heard of bowls in the world just showing up and having a drink or two and just having a good time at the bowls club, um, which is definitely something you don't get here. Um, speaking along those lines as well, uh, w what was the biggest shock to you as far as, uh, the club that you worked at versus some of the bigger clubs here in Canada? Um, so the club I worked at was a fairly big club. It had a restaurant that was open two or three days a week. Um, and then the bar, which was open, um, pretty much as long as there's people in the club. Um, so it was pretty big. We're getting like... 30, 40, 50 people there in a night, um, just hanging out, not even playing. Um, whereas here, you obviously, do, you don't get that. If you're at the club, you're there to bowl, right? Very true. Sure. What, was, uh, what was your favorite club that you visited while you were in Australia? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> it would either have to be 
uh, the club I played for, Double View, was a really, really awesome location. Or um, I went down to the Dudley Park Long Bowls Club when I played in um, the Everest, um, which was also a really cool, cool experience just because of everything that's happened at that club before. Right on. So you mentioned the Everest. Tell us a little bit about yep. that. I, I know what it is, but um, yeah. let, let everybody else know what the Everest is. Um, so I actually believe it's the highest paying event in the world right now. Uh, it's 100K first prize. Um, I was lucky enough to get sponsored to go into it. Um, so somebody paid my entry fee, which was uh, $1,000. Um, and uh, I got to play in uh, my round, my, my pool. I didn't get out of that. But in my pool was uh, Aaron Wilson and um, two other guys from, uh, one other guy from WA, uh, Daniel Brown, and then a guy who uh, who funds a lot of uh, the really good bowlers to come down, uh Damien McGee. Um, so it was really, really cool experience uh, playing all of them. I got absolutely slaughtered by uh, Aaron. <laughs> uh, that was my first singles game in Australia was oh, wow. against Aaron Wilson. And I ended up going up like 5-3 and I was on top of the world. And uh, <laughs> it all just went downhill so fast. <laughs> you, me- you mentioned Aaron Wilson there. I've had also had the opportunity to play against Aaron. And I've said on this show before, I think he's probably the best player I've ever played against. Um, would you say Aaron Wilson was up there for one of the best players you've ever played against as well? Or do you think there's somebody uh, that you played that was on a higher level? Um, I also got to play Bester while I was down there uh, in the Pro-Am before uh, the Everest, um, which was really cool. He's he's one of my heroes. Um uh, so I would probably say uh, Bester is the best bowler I've ever played. Um, but I actually beat – me and Kyle beat Bester in the Pro-Am, well uh, which was awesome. <laughs> um, so I'd, I, I would say Bester is the best, best player I've ever played against. Nice. Um, I want to cycle back to uh, your coaching comments. So you've, you've been coached by a, a lot of different people. You've uh, had the advantage of, of meeting some really, really – uh, experienced, well-known, and uh, uh, I guess great coaching uh, mm-hmm. players. Uh, I wanted to um, to ask you about one of them in particular, and someone that you've worked with a lot here, uh, John Bazier. What what does yeah. John Bazier meant to you as far as your bowling career? Um, John has has been the biggest influence on my bowling career by miles. Um, he's he's also really been for me there on a personal level not just as a bulls coach um i'm not sure you guys were at my uh my going away party there yeah. uh, obviously he means a great deal to me and uh, i mean a great deal to him his uh his knowledge of the game is incredible um i don't think i've ever met somebody who knows the game as well and knows how to teach the game as well as john i'd have to agree uh john bazier yeah. is one of our, our senior national players um, he teamed up with Bester, Ryan Bester in the multi-nations just recently to win the gold in the pairs. And John hadn't really bowled consistently probably, what, the last five years? <laughs> yeah, uh, I started getting coaching from him probably three or four years ago, and uh, that was like him coming out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Daryl. Oh, um, I, w- I was also going to ask you uh, about growing up in bowls and mm-hmm. when you, when did you first get the itch to start bowls and what has kept you going uh, in it since? Um, yeah, so I think when I started bowls, it was just solely to play in the nationals, like uh, like Luke said there. Uh, it was at my home club. That's actually why I started playing. Um, I like read an article about the nationals at Etobicoke there, so decided to join and play in it. Um, why not? Um, after that year, I found, uh, I obviously got introduced to a lot of the really young bowlers in bowls already, which was a super big advantage, guys like Luke. Um, and the next year is when I got really involved in the junior circuit for, for tournaments. So the events in Colburg and Oshawa, Peterborough, Lindsay. Um, and I think that's honestly what kept me in the game. I, I got to really bond with people my own age. Um, and I'll have lifelong friends like like luke um for because of the sport um and i think that's really what what kept me in at at the start uh, when i was young um now i love the game so much so it's i'll yeah yeah i just wanted to i just wanted to touch on that quick uh 
so what what caught uh sorry i was gonna say kyle kyle's the one that's commenting but what eric said uh is really important for anybody listening uh and any clubs that are listening to this podcast um time and time again everybody says it's so hard to get juniors and so hard to keep juniors yeah and to get young people when you get groups and when you get people that are the same age the same generation bonding with each other talking with each other um that's the big bonus to keeping people around. If it's just yeah. one or two, they may not stay. Yeah, you got to get the, the friendships going. It really is the truth, though, because like I remember I went through a phase uh, just around the end of high school where I was like, eh, maybe I'll play a couple more years, maybe not. And I, whenever I won the under-25s in Vancouver, I literally said to everyone when I got there, I was like, this is my last year, I'm never playing again. Yeah. I was like, I'll just coach. And then I won, and I was like, God, I don't think I can quit. <laughs> Um, Kyle uh, actually just commented something funny there and says, ask why we call him pineapple. Um, after my first day in Australia, I wasn't called Eric. At, like that was the first and last day I was called Eric. It was just piney after that. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, uh, it's the only thing I know how to say in French. So, uh, they expected me to come down knowing <laughs> French. And I said, yeah, the only thing I know how to say is just sweet na na which means I'm a pineapple. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, it's been piney. And I actually have it, I don't know if you can see, tattooed on my arm there. Oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric, let's have a little bit of fun now. Um, if you could build a Canadian dream team to play oh. alongside you, so you and three other people, who would be on your team? And where would they play? Oh, man, what are you doing to me here? Um, <laughs> I would probably say... Uh, hmm. I'd want to play two. Two's my favorite position in fours. Nice. Um, I would probably put my dad as lead. Um, we've, I've grown through the game playing with my dad. Um, I love playing with my dad. It's something we do weekly. Um, then I'd probably have John at three, just because of his knowledge of the game. He'd be, he'd be incredible to uh, to be calling heads. Yeah. And then, uh, what's the restriction on on skips here? Like, can I can I pick Bester? You can pick Bester. He's still Canadian. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take Bester as my skip, just because uh, he's Bester. <laughs> it is it, it is really a shame, uh, Daryl. He fell right into the uh, the old uh, saying: you had to hide your worst player at second. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, everybody listening out there, you know, second is important, man. And it's yeah, a good, no, it's a good think, spot. I think second is one of the most valuable spots on a on a force team for sure. Yeah, we touched on this, Eric, on the last or one of our last podcasts, and uh, I said I think every player is just as important oh, as the next sure. guy. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to play second. Like my personal favorite spot's third, just because I'm a big fan of trying to turn heads over and convert yeah. heads and being a little bit more aggressive. So that's just me, but different for everybody, I suppose. Very true. Um, so. I want to give a shout out to Kyle. He just subscribed to the channel. Thanks, Kyle, hey. for the subscription. It means a lot. Uh, and I also want to um, ask you a question about what Perth Penance has said. And I'm not sure who it, who Perth Penance is, but it says, uh, you sleep a lot, Eric. And then yeah. he also says, uh, I can't believe you're awake. Rob would be so proud. So what is that all about? Um, so the guy, Perth Pennant is uh, Dave Rankin. He's the other guy that was at... Uh at potters with kyle okay um so he played for a different club in australia called uh, the cardinia cats um which is all good it's an artificial club really pretty um he said i sleep a lot um i i'm not sure if he's just because the time change right now he's probably up at a weird time so i'm not <laughs> sure if that's uh that's what it is he's just not getting the time change maybe so i'm not yeah. actually sure but i do spend a lot of time sleeping so <laughs> wrong with sleeping. You gotta get, yeah. you gotta get your eight to twelve every oh, night. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. And I think Cam is wondering, uh, what happened to your hair? I don't think yeah, he knows the secret behind your hair. I, I got a got a man bun now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of, I find my hair is a lot easier to just put up than worry about. So uh, yeah, I just throw it up every day now. Sorry, if Cam. Just, when like, do you think you're gonna get it cut? Oh, I don't know. If uh, if it was up to my mom right now, 
<laughs> right. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it for a little bit. Fair enough. So, uh, well, Perth Penance <laughs> is back at it. So you're playing second because you can't throw a jack. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually led in led in Australia for uh, for most of my time down there, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, my jack throwing on the 18 second green is is um, not, not good. It's it's a skill to be learned, right? It's it's really it important is, yeah. too. 18 second greens and you're throwing a jack, you do not have to throw that thing hard. No, you don't. It's it's a bit easier in Canada where you can just lob it down there. It's going <laughs> to stop wherever it hits the grass. So yeah. Uh, I, wa- I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit about um, your family connection. So uh, your dad's heavily involved in, in what you do. Uh, he's been uh, involved in um, uh, Port Credit as well, which is uh, your yeah. club here. Um, unfortunately, this year kind of fizzled out and we haven't been able to do competitive bowls. But I know <laughs> he was the driving force behind, um, uh, is it the Phoenix Championship? Yeah, Phoenix Championship of Bulls. Um, so that's actually my dad and my mom. My mom's doing a ton of work for it as well. Um, they're both uh, really, really putting in uh, some hard work for that. It was really disappointing when we had to cancel that uh, this year. Um, we are going to be running it next year. Um, the Phoenix is going to be uh, kind of a, a flip on the uh, the scoring system in Bulls. Um, if anyone here is familiar with uh, UBC in the chat, um, that's the the scoring format that they're gonna they're gonna run. And it's going to be lots of games, lots of turnover, quick games, uh, and it should be really, really exciting bulls. Now, is this uh, uh, teams that are going to be made up and run right through the season, or how how does the format actually work? No, so it's going to be it's just going to be one. It's there's going to be multiple events. There's going to be uh, I believe three. Uh, the first two are just going to be trials, kind of. If you win them, you get your entry into the main one funded, um, which would be cool. Um, and then the last one, which is going to be near the end of the year, there's going to be a lot more teams, uh, really quick turnover on games. Um, it's going to be like playing eight games a day or something like that. Oh, well. Um, yeah, it's going to be quick, fast, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, hopefully. And how many people per team is that? Two. Two. Yeah. Are we still playing next year? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to throw a couple more bowls, though. <laughs> I, I got plenty of time to practice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Luke, come on. Stop using the show to pick up teammates, all right? <laughs> Sorry. I had to, repl- I had to replace Daryl. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with uh, with the Phoenix Bulls uh, championship that's going on, um, I know we wanted to get your dad on the show. Uh, yeah. When everything kind of fell apart, we figured we'd wait until uh, something came up. Uh, I'm glad you, you were able to plug it, and I'm glad that you're on here. What has your dad meant to you as far as your Bulls career? Oh, um, a ton. Obviously, he has he has always been there for me. He's oh, it took like three years for him to miss a game. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's he's always been there. He's been there to celebrate with me. He's been there to cry with me. He's uh, he's uh, he's been a huge part. And there's no chance, no chance, I would be anywhere near where I am right now without without my dad. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I know you talked uh, the other day uh, about family and bowls. You had a post on Instagram about it, yeah. And that definitely, I think a lot of younger bowlers can relate to how much their dad or grandfather, whatever it was, meant to them in bowls. Yeah, we, we've talked about it on the show previously. And like uh, like you said, I'm, I'm sure you can relate, Eric. Uh, it's just awesome how it's one of those sports how i can go out there and play with my dad until the day he stops rolling bowls like i never got to play hockey or baseball or yeah, soccer exactly. or anything along those lines with my dad or my uncles or anybody like that when bowls is almost a special sport because you can play with your dad up until he can't play anymore mm-hmm. or you can't play anymore or something mm-hmm. happens so i've always really liked that aspect about bowls and it always brings me back it always brings me back just so it's something i know i get to see my dad every year and get to go out there and hang out with him yeah, it's actually one of my one of my best memories in Bulls period is when me and my dad actually played Luke and his dad in the in the PBA qualifiers there in pairs. In the um, that was a good in the game. Semifinals. It was a really really good game, um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, a really awesome vet- a game. Fortunately, me and my dad came out on top, but uh, yeah, it was a it was a definitely a good game. 
It was the bad green. <laughs> so, Eric, what's been your uh, probably best achievement, or not necessarily achievement, but just your best moment in bowls? And on the flip side, what's what's been one Work. of the tougher moments? Um, so tougher is probably easier for me. Uh, um, it would either be losing the uh, U25 semi finals last year uh it won to fuka i was up uh 18 11 i think in the semifinals, and uh ended up losing that one i think you were actually streaming that game daryl yeah i think oh, so no yeah no? yeah you were i think it was you and uh terry it, it might but, have been yeah yeah <laughs> so that was that was atrocious that was my worst by far <laughs> Um, my best would either be winning the uh, U25 Mixed Triples Worlds in Glasgow or um, me and Kyle actually played an event in Australia called the W Master Pairs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a massive event down there. Um, ended up coming equal thirds. Um, and like the payout on it was like 500 bucks or something each for equal third, which is nothing like we get here. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever won five hundred dollars in a tournament here. Yeah, I think it was four fifty each for equal third, which is nuts. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How about we move over to a little bit of fun here? Um, I'm gonna bring up a series of pictures, and yeah. uh, I just want to get your take on what it is either where it is, what it meant to you, uh, the people in it, whatever it is, uh, just some commentary on it. So we've got a picture up of, uh, it's the Canadian Youth Championships. It's a yep. whole bunch of youth uh, bowlers. This was a great event in Nova Scotia. What, is, yep. what did this mean to you? Yeah, so this is in uh, Halifax, uh, the Dartmouth, Dart Dartmouth Lawn yeah. Bowling yep. Club. That's right. Um, and uh, so this was an event where I was really, really happy with how I played in the round robin. I ended up... Uh, having to play a tiebreaker to get into the playoffs against Carter Watson. Um, and that would probably be my first really big game I ever kind of played. Um, I ended up losing, which is unfortunate. But, um, yeah, it was a really good event. Really awesome to see all these people, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Halifax. I think this was from the same event. But what is, same what event, is this? yeah. <clears throat> So that's uh, Emily. That was my Foster Lang partner. We ended up getting silver, which was uh, really, really fun. Really enjoyed it. And uh, how long had uh, she been playing? Oh, I think this was her like third or fourth month. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're you think you're bang on there. That that was incredible. Yeah, yeah she uh, she definitely played some really really good shots and kept her compo composure well. We ended up losing in the finals to. Uh, Jordan and Mason, I think. All right. Oop, we'll go this way. Oh, so well, there's obviously a guy you know in the in the middle there. Yeah, he's pretty good looking um, too. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, well, one was of talking the... about Mike, right? <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, that was uh, what was the first tournament at Heritage last year? Uh, I think it was 2017. Yeah. 2017. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, that was what Jurgen just couldn't make it, and I filled in for him at the event. Uh, I think we ended up winning that too, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. You guys are obviously a hoot to play with um, <laughs> and uh, really good bowlers. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, play with you three any day. And what about this? Oh, was that Nationals? Yeah, so that's the uh, Nationals I won in Winnipeg there. Um, that was a really uh, crazy event for me. I played a really, really good round robin. Um, played out of my pants the whole event. And then uh, <laughs> had a really, really rough uh, rough semis. My dad was in the hospital. Um, it was just a disaster. And uh, actually, the guy on the left there, Jake, almost beat me in the semis. And then uh, ended up winning the finals pretty good. So that was a, a really, really big win for me uh really important to me and uh yeah it was uh definitely an experience and this is more recent this is i believe playing 
that's at the Everest. Um, I think that's going to be either Ryan Bester or Kevin Anderson behind me. Okay. Um, or Damian McGee. One of the three. Um, so, yeah, those are the bowls I used in Australia. Optimas, really enjoyed them. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't too long ago, so that would have been at the Everest. And finally, this one. Yeah, so that was after after me and Kyle's Pro-Am game. Pro -Am game. Um, so Kyle's the one on the front left. Yep. Uh, we ended up playing Bester and uh, Sandy. That's the girl. Uh, that was right after the game we played against them. Okay. And uh, ended up winning. So how the Pro-Am at the Everest works is you buy, like, tickets, and your name kind of, like, goes into a hat, and then they pick out, like, 14 tickets, and that's the person who plays with, like, Bester or Aaron Wilson and or all those big, big guys, right? right. Um, so me and Kyle, were just we just entered. We didn't do that. But Sandy won bester in that and we ended up playing them which was awesome all right and we ended up winning nice perfect so eric what's what's next for you in the sport bowls um so um i was i was hoping to get away again this winter um just so i could kind of train a lot more i know i actually talked to you about it i was thinking about going down to arizona for a while um but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening um because just with covid and all that so this this winter will just be working training as much as i can um and getting ready for for next season where hopefully i can come out and have a strong year one last one last question for me anyway um we can see it in your background i know it's on your yeah. arm i know it's on your bowls as well uh yeah. what is that symbol and why is it everywhere <laughs> so that is a uh, Aztec fish. A lot of people say it looks like a turtle or a bird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's actually an Aztec fish. Um, it is tattooed on my arm right there. Um, on my hand, on my right arm. Um, so my sister, my middle sister Kira, actually designed my first set of bowls. Um, so they're the tri-colored Aero Maxims that turn like 34 feet. Right. Um, <laughs> And she just really, really liked that logo. And it looked really good with the colors and all that stuff. So uh, I just stuck with it. And then every set of bowls I have has that logo on them. And it's on my arm. It's on my wall in my uh, bedroom. So, yeah, it's just it, – it signifies bowls for me. And bowls is obviously a massive part of my life. Right. Um, so that's mainly why it's there. Awesome. Nice. So, Eric, before I let you go, there's just something I like to do every show, and I'm just going to kind of speed run through a couple questions here and just kind of give me the first thing that comes to your mind for each question, okay? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's just – I'll start it off with a, with, a, with a softball here. Do you like Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Okay. Um, if you had to pick one male and or female, whatever you want, who is your celebrity crush? Oh, okay. Like – Emma Watson, but at the end of Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Big Harry um, Potter guy. Uh, what's your favorite fast food? Taco Bell. Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee, no, no question. Oh, let's see if I can pick another good one here quick. Uh, TV shows or movies? Uh, TV shows and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Good nice. show. Um, do I got any more, Daryl? What's, an, what's another banger we could give them to get off here? I just uh, want to... Like, you go ahead, Daryl. I, I just wanted to know about the Taco Bell. Did you talk to Ryan Bester? Because that's one of his favorites, too. We did, yeah. <laughs> we did chat about it. He said it's not as good in Australia as it is back here, yeah. which is very believable because can't really touch Taco Bell back here. All right, last one here, Eric. Uh, straight bowls or wide bowls? Uh, see, I use Arrow Grooves. Um, I love them. Uh, they the arrow bias turns a bit earlier than most bowls do. Um, it's kind of like a halfway turn point than um, than a kind of like a hockey stick. People say it's more like a banana than a hockey stick. Yeah. Um, so my favorite bowl is the arrow groove. Um, if whatever you classify that as, then there you go. And we got one, I guess we got one more for you from the chat. Kyle wants to know, do you put oh, pineapple on pizza or no? He knows the answer to that. Pineapple on pizza is the worst thing ever created. <laughs> Fair enough. Different strokes for different folks. I guess. <laughs> right. 
All righty, Eric. Well, thanks a lot for joining us today. We really yeah, do thank appreciate you guys for it. Having- uh, is there anything you want to shout out before we let you go? Uh, no, I just want to uh, thank you too. Obviously, this uh, this podcast has done some incredible things, bring some awareness to the game uh, where it wasn't before. Um, so I really, really do appreciate it and uh, can't wait to see everybody out on the green. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Eric. Stay in touch. All right, buddy. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks, Eric. See you, pal. Bye.